Every Thanksgiving, millions of families around America gather together to celebrate what could easily be considered a microcosm of capitalism itself. As we sit around the table and devour platefuls of food, aren't we really just embodying what makes our economy so great? We dive in headlong and devour everything in sight for our own personal gain. If a turkey is stock options, then mashed potatoes would be dividends. Gravy, of course, would be liquid assets. Corn would be a Roth IRA because, well, obviously. And cranberry sauce would be real estate. But what about stuffing? And more specifically, what about stovetop stuffing? We all know that stuffing is the backbone of the Thanksgiving economy, but is it libertarian? The concept of stuffing an animal that's about to be cooked with various smaller foods dates back at the very least to ancient Rome, possibly earlier. But at the very least, a cookbook written sometime between 200 BC and 100 AD by the Roman gourmet Apicius has recipes in it for stuffed birds. So apparently someone knew what they were doing even way back when. But then from like 200 BC to 1972, nothing happened. Well, nothing in the world of stuffing anyway. That's when Ruth Seams stepped up to bat for the company General Foods and hit a home run in stuffing. Ruth, along with some other employees for the company, created stovetop instant stuffing. Add some water, some butter, cook it, and there you go, stuffing, no turkey needed. That's great and all, but is this creation cooked up from capitalist consciousness, or is it a socialist serving of sodium and saturated communist lies? Well, for starters, General Foods is a capitalist success story. What was once the Postum Cereal Company in 1895 became General Foods in 1929. Then, 56 years later in 1985, Philip Morris, the tobacco company, bought General Foods for $5.6 billion, which just goes to show you how powerful big tobacco is that can buy out a company that sells food. Five years later in 1990, Philip Morris then buys Kraft and throws them all together. So already we've learned that the true stuffing is the money you can stuff your pockets with if you invest in big tobacco. I mean seriously, here's one company that's like, oh yeah, we sell food. Just like, you know, all kinds of food that people need to live and exist. What do you guys sell? Oh us, we sell cigarettes. Really? Just cigarettes? Is there a lot of money in that? <laughs> There's literally enough money to buy your entire company and one of your main competitors within five years of each other. But getting back to food-based stuffing, a lot of ingenuity went into this stuff. In order to get the stuffing just right, they had to make the crumbly bits just the right size to prevent them from getting too soggy or staying too hard. And sure enough, they did it. Now is that kind of ingenuity libertarian? Of course it is. You think Soviet Russia is just going to be all, hey, let's keep throwing money at the stuffing until we get it right? Of course not. It's the same difference between Captain Crunch cereal here in the States and Comrade Crunch over in Vladivostok. We use actual, naturally picked crunch berries in our cereal. Meanwhile, Vladimir and Leonoid are dining on multicolored rocks. We even have different choices of stuffing flavor. There is cornbread, chicken, turkey, low sodium, otherwise known as water flavored stuffing. And there's some other kinds too, um, uh, savory herbs or something. Uh, the parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. We call that the Garfunkel flavor in the Stossel household. Then there's pork, tomato and onion, oops, all berries, and TV VCR repair. And freedom of choice, that might be the most libertarian thing of all. But perhaps most important, it tastes great. I mean, it's not homemade stuffing, but that takes so much time to cook and prepare. And <laughs> let's face it, at some point in time, you have to do a cost-benefit analysis to determine the value of what you're doing. Considering the flavor you get from this stuffing, with the comparatively little time it takes to cook, I'd say it's very much worth it. Unless you can get someone else to do the cooking for you, I mean, that's different. If you can work your 89-year-old grandmother to the bone to get her famous homemade stuffing, and all you have to do is tell her how young she looks and listen to her stories about voting for Eisenhower, then do it. So a stovetop stuffing libertarian? You bet it is. You don't have to wait for Thanksgiving to be thankful for it. Just like you don't have to be thankful to me for telling you about it. <laughs> hey, what do I know? I'm not some gourmet cook from 200 BC. 
Give me a break. 